Welcome to another episode. There are a lot of new and challenging areas in data science, but the one that I think takes the prize for most challenging is causal inference. In a work project that I took on a few years ago to measure the effects of various levers like uh, price, promotion, online order fulfillment, coupons, etc., I ran into a lot of internal and external challenges because I didn't have a good understanding of causal inference. Between that experience and joining a causal inference research group, I hope that what I've learned since will be helpful to you. I choose causal inference as the biggest challenge for data science for two reasons. One, it's one of the problems that people are most unaware that they have. Two, it's all but impossible to know how close you are to the truth in order to measure progress and confidence. Why is it the most overlooked? Well, first, there is a poor understanding of the problem. Most people assume that the business problem they want to solve with machine learning is a prediction problem. Everyone tends to think that predicting the future or predicting an unknown attribute about someone or something is what they want to do. But that is only the case if a business is merely preparing or reacting to that fixed prediction. What I've found is that it's rarely the case that the business merely wants to know what will happen, but instead wants to know what inputs they need to modify in order to change what will happen. Prediction problems would include things like weather or stock prices. In these examples, you typically don't have a way to control the future values. And so your only goal is to figure out what the future will be so that you can prepare for it, such as boarding up your windows uh, or buying or selling shares. Another example in business operations might be forecasting the labor that you would need for, um, for customer demand in different times. Another business case might be that you wanna predict future sales. Uh, in this example, it also sounds like a prediction problem, but because you have levers to pull to influence the outcome, it's likely that the underlying business question involves a counterfactual. If you're not familiar, a counterfactual is a term that is critical to understanding causal inference, and it simply means counter to fact or an alternative world. The idea is that in causal inference, you are less interested in just what will happen and more interested in measuring the influence of one or more attributes on what will happen. So you do not likely want to know the future sales as much as you want to know what levers you can pull to maximize those sales. So every ROI question then is in essence a causal inference problem. Where you learn from history to predict the difference between uh, a world in which a promotion ran and a world in which it didn't and your sales lift is the difference between these two worlds where everything else is the same except that thing that you want to measure. Ask yourself the next time that you're considering a, a machine learning problem, do you really only need to make an accurate prediction without regard to the effects of the features in your model? Or do you need to be able to, with confidence, uh, know how the model is using those features to make a prediction? In my experience, it's pretty often that we really need to know the causal relationships and that the accuracy of the, those effects are even more important than the accuracy of the prediction. Not only is there poor understanding of how often causal inference is the goal of prediction exercises, but even when it is known, the fact that there is no ground truth uh, proves very difficult for data scientists and their stakeholders. When I say that there's no ground truth, it's due to the nature of what we're trying to accomplish. Prediction problems take many variables, uh, the input features to a model, and use all of that information to predict the impact on one variable. In causal inference problems, you have one variable that you're trying to use to predict many feature variables. Most importantly, the target variable truth is known, uh, and you can easily check how close you are to actual data. Knowing the accuracy is pretty helpful and makes it easy to have confidence in the model and comparing different models. In causal inference, you do not have a ground truth feature effect to know if the effects being attributed to each feature are accurate or not. You only know if the combination of features uh, and the effects being attributed to each of them is good in aggregate. Let's take a basic example. If you have a model with several features trying to predict the likelihood that somebody will buy a product, you do not know the truth of how those 10 features contributed to the purchase. Maybe one feature captured whether they receive an email 
and another captured whether they received a web advertisement. You do not know if the model gave email a greater effect than the web ad uh, more accurately, even if the model itself is accurate, because there are many other causal influences to consider. Maybe the model was just better at the other features than those two. If you use lasso regression or other dimensionality reduction techniques, maybe the model was able to drop one of those two in order to uh, use other features or combinations to achieve the same or better overall accuracy. The biggest problems of all come from confounding variables or the related types of variables that can influence the relationship between the variable and the target. For example, maybe emails were sent to people who were already more likely to buy the product. In such a case, the model would attribute the larger effect to email. But the reality is that it wasn't email, but an upstream cause that created the apparent effect. Here is a quick look at a chart that tries to explain some of the different kinds of variables involved in causal relationships. We'll use the following example to make it easier to understand. Pretend like we want to measure the effect of maternal economic deprivation on low birth weights. In this example, age is considered a confounder, which has an influence on whether or not a pregnant mother experiences deprivation and also has an effect on low birth weight. Diet acts as a mediator because diet is impacted by economic deprivation and also has effects on birth weight. Smoking acts as a moderator because results in the study show that smoking has an interaction has interaction effects with deprivation, meaning that combination has a different effect than the sum of the individual effects. Height should have no meaningful interaction with deprivation, but impacts birth weight as an isolated covariate. I could go on for a while about the different kinds of variables and the myriads of ways that prediction accuracy does not indicate causal effect accuracy, but hopefully you can get the main point. There is no ground truth, and there's no way to measure which effect is closer to the truth. That creates a major problem for ways of working, uh, especially for those who are used to reporting or basic prediction problems. When you approach a causal inference problem, you will be expected to be able to know if the model is good and if your effects can be trusted. In a really good test situation, you can have good confidence. And most of what you see online regarding causal inference will often cite great medical test situations where there's already uh, there's only a binary variable um, of receiving treatment or not receiving treatment uh, and a binary target uh, for the outcome, typically uh, whether or not illness or death or something like that occurred. There are placebos and uh, many great things that go into the setup of a good test that it's reasonable to have confidence that a lot of your assumptions are met. And even those tests are often debated in the real world, you'll face far more problems. You will be very unlikely to have a test situation available to you, and if you do, it will not likely be an ideal one. That means that many confounding variables are likely influencing the effects on your target in ways that you do not understand and have no way to investigate. You will be facing a case where there are likely countless variables actually influencing the situation, and you are blind to all of them but a handful of the ones that you hope are the most important. And as stated before, even then you could end up with false effects. So you'll learn confidence is tough to have and improvements are mostly hypothetical based on good hypothesis and reasoning with no actual means of testing. Your business partners will find it troubling when they're used to working with data scientists, giving them certain reports and uh, measurable accuracy on their prediction problems. You will come along and say, here's the effects or here's the ROI. And when they ask for accuracy and confidence, you'll be left saying there is no way to know and no measure for it. Needless to say, that creates challenges, especially if expectations are not set ahead of time. This problem of having no ground truth or measurable accuracy means that research is very limited because in academics, especially in fields like statistics, uh, people tend to rely on the results in order to prove measurable progress. Comparing and measuring results is difficult and debatable, so this topic doesn't really lend itself to academic research. Economics is one of the fields that I found pretty interesting um, to better understand this subject because they too are trying to measure the effects of features in really complex systems. 
There are many who work on this topic, uh, including Judea Pearl, who has written the book on causality. However, one of the most helpful people I've found uh, in addressing this topic is Susan Appy. I have included a link to one of her videos below, which I hope you'll find valuable uh, as I have. Beyond that, like I said, you'll find a lot of information online about causal inference, but the problems are typically very simple and great if you can establish a strong controlled test situation. If not, then you're a bit in the wild west of data science today. So here's some of my recommendations. My first recommendation is that you listen to Susan Athey or others and start to think about where prediction problems are in fact causal inference problems. You must be aware because those who are asking to create prediction models are not likely aware of this issue. Second, learn about the best approaches for causal inference. For example, dimensionality reduction is incredibly dangerous and should be avoided unless it's believed that a feature will have an invalid or duplicative effect. For example, two features that both represent income uh, will split that effect into two, possibly arbitrarily. The best approach will require you to really think through all of the causes that will influence the outcome of the target and whether or not you've effectively captured the variables that best represent those causals. IML, or Interpretive Machine Learning, has made great progress and uh, has launched a lot of techniques that really help in the, the area of causal inference um, in order to pull causal effects from different kinds of models uh, that do not produce uh, simple coefficients for you to be able to utilize. You should especially learn about things like ice plots, partial dependence plots, and Shapley values. You should understand the fundamentals of extrapolation, uh, like the fact that tree-based models will typically limit predictions to the range of training data, whereas regression approaches will be able to extrapolate beyond. For example, say that you want to estimate the unit demand of a product based on its price. If your training data only has examples of the price set at uh, between $1 and $2, and you try to extrapolate the effective price to $3, uh, it will limit that effect to whatever $2 had, uh, whereas linear regression models will extrapolate the linear effect uh, to the never-before-seen range of $3. Tree or network-based models might have, um, they typically can better extrapolate interactions. Uh, so if you do expect that interaction effects are important for your use case, uh, you should consider those. Third, you might not be able to say for sure that the effects are good but there are ways that you can test uh, if they're likely bad. Sometimes this is referred to as uh, refutation. So these are some ways that I have found or developed along the way uh, in my first big causal inference project, and hopefully they'll be helpful to you as well. Test one, consistency over time. If different models on different timeframes are relatively consistent in effect attributions, then the relationships are more likely to be accurate as well. Of course, this is only true if the effect is not expected to change significantly during the selected time frame, or is expected to change in ways that are not reasonable in relation to the results. Basically, if the effects are erratic or inexplicable, uh, we have good reason to doubt the attributed effects. Test two, consistent error within a variable. This does not apply to binary variables, but for all others, if the accuracy at different levels of the variable is consistent, then it's more likely to be an accurate attribution. If accuracy changes uh, across categories or continuous buckets, then it may not be attributing an accurate value to that variable, uh, or maybe there's a confounding factor that it's picking up it, uh, to cause those different accuracy points. Or it might have just honed in on a majority observation point so that it has a reasonable attribution for one specific area, but not across the whole variable. If the output is used in such a case, uh, you should especially be weary of extrapolating uh, the effects in areas where the accuracy is low. Test three, impact of adding another variable. If adding another variable disproportionately impacts the effects of the variable of interest, uh, despite the fact that there's no good reason that it should pull attribution away from that other variable, then there may be some doubt as to the accuracy of the original attributed effects. Uh, either the new feature is wrongly pulling attribution uh, that should have stayed with that variable uh, from some confounding mechanism, or it's pulled some confounding factor outside of those uh, that was making the original attribution inaccurate. If this third test changes the effects and there's no reason to doubt uh, the new effects, then the first two tests should be revisited. 
if the first two tests are not passed, uh, then there's a better chance that the attribution patterns do not reflect causal relationship given available data, or uh, it may be accurate but capturing a volatile effect. If it passes the first two tests, there are two possibilities. Either one, the attribution is accurate, or two, there are confounding variables that are not included in the model, and so false attribution is being made based on that confounding relationship. Ultimately, there are only two tests for this. Test four, business reasoning. If no one can reasonably hypothesize or believe the metrics that you've delivered, uh, they may be false. You can imagine uh, how well that goes over with leaders who want confidence around more results, but that is the reality of, of causal inference problems. Test five is an actual isolated test. The only remaining option is a good test uh, through a controlled experiment where the effect can be better measured and compared against the original attribution from the controlled situation. Note that this is often very costly and sometimes not possible uh, or even ethical to enforce, uh, but if possible, it will confirm or deny the original attribution. I know that that was a lot to digest and congrats if you made it all the way through the end. Uh, although it's a lot to cover, it is really important because it's a massive gap that I've noticed in data scientists understanding, uh, possibly because it really stretches you and your uh, knowledge and skills beyond the technical realm uh, to become more of a holistic thinker. Uh, but those gaps mean opportunity, opportunity to do your job better uh, and opportunity for you to answer questions that others are not prepared to answer. Thank you again for joining. And if you have any questions or thoughts, please include them in the comments below. Uh, and if you liked what you heard, please subscribe. Until next time, see ya.